Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to this week's Weekly D. And today I have the lovely Ariel Alley on and we talk about all of her world traveling. We talk about social media and how to grow yourself a social media following, which I know lots of people love to hear about. So without further ado, this is the Weekly D. Because honey, if you ain't getting your D on the daily, you better at least be getting it once on the weekly. If you're not getting any, if you want some tea, then come and join them up on the weekly tea. It's the weekly tea. Hey, Ali. Thank you for Hi. coming on to my podcast today. Um, it's really for good to. Me. It's so good to actually be able to like chat to you kind of like, well, kind of face to face because <laughs> we talk a lot, obviously, online, but we don't ever really speak like this so it's kind of nice this is the best thing about this podcast yeah. i get to speak to people who i kind of already speak to but haven't verbally <laughs> spoken to so I yeah know, i'm so excited to chat with you yeah it's gonna be really fun so how you been yeah. are you good good yeah how about you are you having a good summer yeah it's good actually what's the summer like there you got a hot one or uh it's kind of hot but it's really humid where i live so i feel like even we'll get some really hot days but they just feel so much hotter because we have so much humidity so yeah i, I mean i was over in europe for quite a while so when i came home i came home to just like heat hot a lot of rain right. too so yeah i don't oh, know yeah. how about you guys That's literally so i've got a list next to me by the way so if you see me looking to my side it's because i've got <laughs> a okay. list of things and actually world tra i've got world traveling on here because i want to oh talk to you God. about all your world travels i swear yes. you've been to more countries than i have like it's crazy <laughs> and um so that. yeah i definitely i definitely want to talk to you about that but um i like to get the podcast started normally with kind of like um the opportunity for you to just give yourself like a little intro who you are where you're from what you do all that sort of stuff um, and then, yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. So hit us, give us your bio. All right. Well, hi, I'm Allie. <laughs> um, and I live in the United States. I'm in Pennsylvania, actually. Um, so just a little bit outside of New York and Philadelphia. I'm kind of right in the middle. Um, I live in a town called Allentown uh, with my husband. Uh, and I lived where we are now for the last uh, 12 years and uh, pretty much grew up in the area, but just moved to the city, uh, what you call it a city, um, a little bit later. So that's where we are now. And I'm a high school teacher, actually. So I don't do pole full time, which sometimes surprises people, but I'm getting ready to go back to school. I teach computers, um, computer programming. And I'm really looking forward to, I'm taking a sabbatical this year, um, halfway through the year, I'll finish up my school year in January. Um, so I can go and actually do some more poll and teaching and things like that um, overseas. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, but I'm a little sad that the summer's almost over. So one week from today, I'll be back to work. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my God, so many yeah. things to unpack there. Okay, so <laughs> first of all, yeah, because again, like on my list, I was like, I wonder if poll was like a full-time thing. So you're no, actually a computer, <laughs> So you teach compute computing, do you? What is sorry, that's yeah. that was no, not what you said. You said something else. What was it's something to do with computers, wasn't it? I teach computer programming. So that's basically it, yeah. um mostly coding, but I also teach some web design and a little bit of graphic design as well. So I do all of those it's mostly like electives for kids, so it should be fun for them. Um but at this so point, you do I coding? You do all the yes, coding and stuff. That I is do. crazy. <laughs> you smart cookie. Oh my God. It looks so hard. That. Oh my God. Yeah, it it's, crazy. I mean, I only teach uh, Python as the language that we work with at the school. So it's not a super difficult one, but it's fun. Right. Yeah, oh my God. That's stuff. so cool. Yeah. And this is being taught at, so you, when you're saying school, are you talking actual high school, college, or how does it work there? So high school, so it would be grades nine through twelve for us, um, which is basically what age ages, is that? Uh, Fourteen to eighteen. Um, okay. So the old one. So getting ready to go to, I guess, university. So they're getting ready for college, is what we would say, um, or whatever sure. they're choosing to do afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Oh my god! And you said you had a husband as well. I did not yeah. realize that either. <laughs> I know, so, I keep it all, all stuff off of social media. <laughs> I know, no, that's cool though. I like that you do that. But like, so, and obviously, um, you do a lot. So obviously you're training, you're traveling, teaching, you also teach at a school. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you saw your husband? <laughs> <laughs> well, this morning. <laughs> uh, and he does, he comes with me to some of the things that I do. So he, uh, but I mean, but together every day, really. So we right, home. Okay. and then he'll come and meet me when I'm away. He'll come for like some of the trips that I take, but 
he can't always come for all of them because he works too. <laughs> sure. What does he do? <laughs> he's an electrician. So he works with the electrical union. He uh, does a lot of work on our house too. So that's how like my space that I train in, he built that for me. And um, nice. you know, where I train when I do flying pole and stuff like that in our barn, we have a barn out back. So he's uh, good at all of those things. What a handy husband to have. He is, so I know. Is it his, it's his own company or he works for an electrical company? He works for an electrical company, yeah, yeah. He's a right, foreman. okay. Yeah, he's been doing that I his see. whole life. Yeah. Right. How long have you been together for? <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, forever. <laughs> like 20 years. We've been married for uh, going on, I think, 18. <laughs> so long. Wow. <laughs> oh <old>. my God. <laughs> So where, what age did you guys meet, if you don't mind me asking? No, I don't mind at all. I was actually 19, um, and I was just the first year in college. I know, I know. We still like each other. Oh, my God, that's <laughs> amazing. Sometimes. Yeah, so uh, we met when I was still in college, and, um, yep, we're still together. We got married a few years after that and uh, still together now. So your pole journey must have actually started when you were already together and mar married, probably, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were together for, I would say, because I've been doing pole now for like eight or nine years. So we were together for uh, at least 11 years at that point. So he's been present for all of it and very supportive. Right. So That's supportive. so good. And yeah. you said, what's his like background with regards to fitness? Is he into fitness or anything? Or is he not very no. athletic at all? Not really athletic, but he does have a background with like BMX bike riding, which actually we might be coming. He wants to go see like a bike race that's in the U somewhere in the UK, like off of uh -huh. like, the Isle of Man or something. So we might actually be coming there. Um, but he was super into BMX bike riding. And so he's the one, if I wanted to learn like flips and stuff like that, he'll actually help me with flips because he can do a lot of that stuff. Um, and so he'll spot me and that's how his fitness background was really just that it wasn't much of anything else. You said about the bike racing. Is he coming yeah. to watch a, a BMX bike racing, or is he coming to watch? big bike. Yeah, like we're gonna. I think we're gonna come to the U UK in May. I think or well, something like that. I'm not looking always, into it. The only reason I asked was because, um, cause you said Isle of Man, but Isle of Man is like super well known for super bikes. They have like a massive, so, maybe, uh, so it might yeah, be that. I don't yeah, know it might be the super bike because that's like super like super what, famous. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what he wants to come, um, and, uh, actually see. So I was like, oh, I might get a chance to actually visit the UK and you, because yes, I would come yes. to you for sure. Yeah, that'd be so cool. Yeah, come <laughs> yeah. stay here. You're more welcome to stay with me. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, no, that would be so cool. So when you first started doing pole, what was his impression of you like starting? Like, how did it start for you? Did it start as a hobby or did it start in the clubs? We're non-judgmental here. No, um, it started for me as a hobby. So basically, I personally, I wasn't growing up. I wasn't really into fitness at all. I was a, a swimmer for a little bit in high school, but that was it. <laughs> Um, and then when I graduated from, from college, I started running just because I was like sitting in, I, well, I wasn't even a teacher yet. I was sitting in an office all day. I really need to get started with something or I'm just going to sit here and waste away. So I started running and that kind of got me into yoga, which then got me into pole. And so what ended up happening were um, two of his sisters were doing pole and they just started and I'd been really into yoga and they're like, you have to come with us. You have to come with us. And I never even really heard of pole as like a sport. So I was just. I, I laughed. I, like, I do yoga. I could definitely do that. I was, I was so cocky. And I was like, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm going to come and I'll be able to do everything. Awesome. And I went to my first class and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. And um, I was addicted at that point. So I started with his family actually. So that was pretty cool because we spend a lot of time together and hang out. Um, and so it was always a, a good thing. The studio that I was training for was um, a bit or training with was a bit further away. So I would have to drive a good 40 minutes. So, I mean, that was a bit much because I was going at one point I was going every single day because I was, you know, right. as we all do, we get so addicted. I was like, I gotta go as, as often as possible. I didn't have a home pole yet or anything like that. And he was always super supportive of it. Of course he always like would wish I would be home more, but he was never like, you can't go. Like it was always very, very um, involved in, you know, make, making sure that I was um, able to do whatever I wanted to. So it was nice. And how did your, how do your sister-in-laws feel now about you being like this famous pole dancer? Are they like, this is crazy. We literally brought you to a pole cast for a fun. And now you're doing this as like, uh, an actual like job. Like, what do they think of that? They must think it's so funny. Yeah, I think they think it's pretty cool. I mean, we don't get to train as, together as often since uh, COVID and we teach our different studios now, but they think it's pretty cool. So it's, it's a lot of fun that, that we all oh, do the same they're, thing. They're teachers as well. 
Yes, both of them, um, take, they do a lot of doubles, so um, they, they teach doubles together, um, and then they both will teach uh, classes as well. Yeah, so they both teach. That is so cool. Okay, fa nice. Family hobby. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. That's so fun. Um, yeah. So I want to talk to you about uh, your pole career and, like, sure. where it kind of sort of, like, started. How long would you say it took you? Like, what year did you start? And like, how long would you say it took you before you got to a point where you were, like, as no, you know, we can never obviously, we never like saying that we're good, obviously, because we're always no, saying no, critical of ourselves. But like, <laughs> advanced, like what, how long did it take to get to like that advanced sort of level? I feel like I'm not, I'm still not at that level. Um, Shut no, up. Would, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I would say um, we were all doing it like pretty casually, even like before COVID, um, you know, the whole group of people that I was training with, we were all, um, you know, just training regularly, posting regularly. For me, it was never really about, anything more than just kind of a personal journey and for me to kind of keep track of what I was teaching at the studio because I was teaching a lot of classes and I always wanted to keep track of everything. And for me, it was kind of like during COVID actually, because I was able to train at home. I know that's really different. Um, and some people that's maybe where their journey changed for them in a different way. But for me, COVID, um, you know, really changed a lot because I was home and I was training and then I started teaching online. And then that's where um, I really started to uh, realize that my focus and what I enjoy the most about pole is the community. So when I started teaching online and meeting people online and meeting new students from all over the world, that's where my goals kind of changed a little bit. And I was like, well, I mean, I love training for myself. And I feel like I've gotten to a point now where I can maybe put out quality content for students and, um, you know, really work on, you know, the community aspect of it. And that's I've always been a really social person. So that's the part of it um, for me where I kind of felt like, OK, now I feel like I'm really part of the community and I've really, um, you know, gotten to a point with my whole career that, um, you know, I can say all the things that you were, you know, kind of just seeing. I don't want to say good, yeah. but like I'm able to uh -huh. put out content that people appreciate and bring people together. And did competing have anything like any involvement with your journey at all? Have you done any competing? Um, I have. I've competed mostly with PSO because I feel like it's the most regularly available um, competition in the U.S. So before I was doing quite a bit of traveling, that's pretty much what I was doing was competing with PSO. And um, I loved competing. It was a lot of fun. But I think I really liked it more before COVID. I kind of feel like for me since then, um, my since my focus has changed and I'm not quite as interested in competing anymore. Um, you know, it, it, it doesn't really serve me. I just did a competition recently. I was in um, Zurich and I did PSO Zurich, but it was more just for fun. Like I was the end of my trip. It was my last day there. I knew it was going to be one of my last days there. So for me, that was just for fun to get myself on stage, make sure I was, uh, you know, training a little bit for myself while I was away. Um, but uh, for me, competing, I would say maybe got me interested in wanting to get better. But then um, it, I feel like it took a backseat when I started teaching more and really getting more involved with the community aspect of it if that makes sense and how, how did you get on at pso in zurich i got second place which was fun um, That's great. I, I really, it was awesome yeah it was so different though because i mean one thing i talked about this a lot while i was away but we have like air conditioning everywhere here and i showed up in zurich to, to compete and there's no air conditioning in the studio or in welcome the, in to the, europe um, babe I we're know, very I know. prepared here <laughs> i was like oh my gosh i mean i knew that was probably the case after teaching for so long over there but i was like oh my gosh i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do my routine in like 90 degree weather and like a hot theater and i was really proud of myself that i was able so i was just that made me really happy that i was able to get through my piece and put something on stage that i was proud of. It was my best run through of the piece and I couldn't have been happier with the results. So it was a lot of fun to compete again, but I don't know that I'm itching to do another one. I totally agree with what you were saying about <laughs> the studios, by the way, because if there's one thing I can't stand about some European should not all, because obviously some do have it, but <laughs> Not many have AC, no. and that's because of it, especially in the UK. I mean, I don't really know any, uh, actually, I do know one that have AC in the UK yeah. because, I mean, we barely need it. I mean, it's supposed to be summer now, and yeah, currently yeah. it's not really hot at all. Like, yeah. it's really been a bit of a shitty summer. But, you know, the world is getting hotter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, so most of Europe is freaking like, yeah, most of <laughs> Europe is like, you know, parts of Greece are on fire at the moment. It's literally yeah, so it's hot. Crazy. It's yeah, crazy, it's crazy, crazy. Like literally so crazy. So, so crazy. you know, I definitely think it's going to be something that more people are going to be having. But that's one thing I've always loved about the US, and I always tell this story. But <laughs> I went the first time I went to kind of like the US, like um, for work was um, when I was going to um, what's it called Pole Expo. 
Okay. And I'm like, Vegas, never been there before. Let's look and see what the weather is. So I look online, I'm like, <laughs> like wow. So it's, hot. I'm like, oh my God, it's so hot there. It's so so hot. I so I pack my bags, I pack all these cute vests, shorts, all this. I get there, I go into the hotels and I'm like, oh my God, it's fucking freezing in here. I'm like, <laughs> so, cool. so I literally was like, what am I gonna wear? I've brought all these hot clothes. I have nothing warm to wear. So I literally had to go shopping, buy like some hoodies and stuff. Cause yeah, I was so taking cool. these workshops and I was so cold. Yeah, it was so funny. I remember just thinking, wow, I was not prepared for how <laughs> warm, sorry, how um, like cold it was going to be inside the yeah. buildings there. But it's because like, it's so normal. I don't actually like, love it though. Like I like the no air conditioning thing that I experienced when I'm over in Europe. Mm. I feel like I can actually wear my summer clothing, but then competing, I was like, hmm, I don't know if I like it for this. <laughs> right. I mean, it has its benefits. I mean, sometimes like when it's kind of like, you know, when it's, I don't know if you do degrees or not, probably not, you're probably Fahrenheit, aren't you? But like, you know, when yeah, it's kind of like, it, yeah. yeah, like degrees, I'd say like up to like between 20s, 25, I can cope without mm. air, air conditioning. Yeah. When we go over that, I'm like, having a bit of AC mm. on right now would be amazing. Nice. But then yeah. we also have the opposite problem where we also don't have really adequate heating in many studios. I'm, oh. one, I'm actually so lucky with my studio. It's so warm in the winter because That's I'm in a warm. community center. So oh, inside nice. that community center, we have a lot of older people who use the they center for up some of the other rooms. So we have to keep it warm for them. And I'm like, oh, That's thank so God. Like, thank I'm, God. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, keep those old people warm. <laughs> keep them warm because I want to stay warm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm super lucky with that. But I totally understand what you're saying. Like, especially when you're competing and stuff, you want that sort of like perfect, perfect temperature. Yeah. Mm, of course. And I, I did not have that. But I was really pleased with what I did. So I was okay. That's I good. Yeah. That. Well, That's great. Second place is pretty <laughs> awesome, hey? Yeah, I was um, so excited. So when you're traveling and teaching uh, workshops and stuff, because like I said, one of the things on my list was world traveling, because one thing I saw on your page was that you're always in different countries. So are you doing this during school holidays, I'm assuming? Yeah. So I've been the last two summers, I, as soon as school ended, I came, I was teaching for Pole Camp Deutschland, actually, up on the northern end of Germany. Um, uh -huh. So I was there. That was what kind of brought me over. And then just went to different studios throughout the summer when I was, I was away for five weeks this year. Last year was about three and a half weeks. Um, but basically doing that during the school holiday in the summer, we are end pretty early beginning of June. So I was done on June 4th and I was on a plane on, on June 6th. And then I came home um, the first week in July. It was the end of the first week of July. Uh, that right. I came home. I would have stayed longer if I could have, but I was like, ah, I guess I should go home. My husband's there. <laughs> and what do you, um, what do you think of Europe? I love it. I would move there. <laughs> if he wanted to go, you I would would? go. I, yes, I really, really love it. Yeah. What, I, what I country would you move to? Mm, I love Switzerland. I love Slovenia and I do speak some French. So I always like France. So I, I would definitely consider one of those. <laughs> well, I, I mean, Swiss, Switzerland is gorgeous, but I mean, oh, I hope you're amazing. rich because unless yeah, you are, it's, <laughs> it's so freaking expensive. Do you know, what, whenever so I go, whenever I go to Switzerland, they have this Love amazing it. chocolate shop there. Um, <gasps> oh my God, it's literally gone out of my head. I think I Lederach. know. Is it one? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. Lederach, yeah. <laughs> I think actually we spoke about it. I think I might yeah, even message you about it and said, yes. oh, go and get some of this. Because Literally. I think they have them in more than one of the cities. They're all yeah. over the place. And I think I saw it in mm -hmm. Geneva, actually. I went to one yes. in Geneva. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they've got them. They've got a few. Like, I mainly see them at the airports, but there's like shops yeah. all over. But yeah, it's a big, like a big brand there. But And they do like these slabs of chocolate where they basically will break off bits Good. for you. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, break this off, break this. And the next minute <laughs> they're like, they're like 60 euros. I'm like... <gasps> I'm like, like, what? what did I do? I'm like, oh my God. And, I'm, and at this point, I've committed. So I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, okay. You have I'm to do it. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm just going to have to take it all. Darn. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Literally, so many people are always like, oh my God, it's going to last you ages. I'm like, babe, that's no. literally going to last me and Mitch one evening. That will be yeah, gone. Like, literally. I know. <laughs> I know. I could definitely put back 60 euros worth of chocolate in a night with my husband. Yeah, we'll sit there and eat that. Definitely. For sure. So, um, <laughs> So with regards to like the competing thing, I just wanted to wrap that bit up that we were talking about. Do you oh, yeah, think yeah. you could see yourself ever doing any more or are you kind of done with the competing now? I feel like 
right now I'm kind of done with it. I did really have a good time doing the last one that I did. It was, but I, again, it was fun because I, a lot of the people I'd been teaching the entire summer, they were, they were there. So I feel like for me, it was more fun because of the social end of it. So sure. maybe I'll do another one possibly in the future. And I don't know, maybe if there's another one while I'm away teaching, I really liked that too. Cause I felt like it kind of was like a nice ending to my trip. So I liked kind of wrapping it in with a trip. Although then, I mean, it was stressful to try to train for it while I was away. Um, I did as best as I could, but um, I definitely mm. think for now I'm good, but maybe, maybe, maybe next year we'll see. I say I'm good. And then I'm like, Ooh, what else is out yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> what's like, what's like your relationship with competing and on the run up to it? And I only ask that because so many people that I speak to, we talk about like the stress, the experience yes, on the run up to the actual day. And you know, how, how do you, say you would deal with you deal with that like because you're doing so much but I could not do a full-time job as well as all the stuff that I do it's just no way I, I haven't got the time I wish I could get rid of well we'll see if I can get rid of the full-time job one day um <laughs> no when I um it depends like this time around was a little different because I knew I was going to be away so I made sure that leading up to the competition I had the whole thing choreographed before I left so that all I had to do every time I visited a studio or, um, you know, visited a friend that I was training with there, I could just run it and be done run with it. it. Like I needed mm -hmm. to just be able to like, I'm just going to do one run through and move on um, and not be it. So I actually, for this last competition, I trained for a showcase and I really only put, so a per, like a performance at the studio that we had. So we had a little showcase in May. Um, and so I put something together like two weeks before that. And then I, Kind of just trained for that and then trained that until i left for um europe and then i would just run my routine once or twice a week but when i was when i'm home and if i sign up for a competition like in uh, philadelphia we have like pso liberty i would probably work on my routine almost i wouldn't say every, not, maybe not every day but almost every time i train so um i'm not learning as many new things or like putting out as much like new content or anything like that it's just kind of like recycled stuff at that point um because i don't have time to put new things together so i would say mm -hmm. like the time focus with competing is probably something that i'm maybe not interested in investing that much time right now uh mm. in another competition especially if i'm doing one where it's in the u.s i have the ability to train for it right up to the day i can train in you know my whole room or in the studio or whatever um i feel like it was just a different situation this time because i knew i couldn't really do anything too super crazy um since i wouldn't have time to train for it so really the focus is it um, you know, leading up to it is dependent on the, the situation of the competition um, for me. So if I'm traveling and competing, which I've done twice now, I don't put, um, I would say it's not as difficult of a routine for me to train. Whereas if it's something that it's more local, I'll put a lot more time into it. And I do get really stressed out. I'm a nervous competitor. So like when I uh, am getting ready to compete to, before I get on stage, I'm very quiet. Like I don't want to talk to anybody and I'm a social person. So it's the opposite of what I normally am like. So that part of it's not fun for me either. Um, like the, just the nerves ahead of time. I don't love that. <laughs> That's yeah. for sure. I think I, I was talking to Jacob about this literally just the other day, Jacob Colossa, do you know Jacob? Yeah. 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 Like I was talking to him about it. I was saying to him like, you know, I love the bit when you're on stage and I yes, might even say, I part. could even say I, I, I like the, you know, when you're getting excited and you've just entered. And then as soon as I walk that into the studio, great. <laughs> that part's great. I'm just like, oh, I'm so excited. I've just entered something. Then I go into the studio and start creating. And then oh, obviously you hit the, the, the stumbling blocks, which everyone does. And it just starts to stress me out. Then I'm literally stressed all the way up to the yeah. day of competing. I absolutely yeah. love it. And then it's over within it's four minutes. So and, and it's just yep. like, ugh. sometimes I'm just like, was that worth all of that stress? And, you know, and sometimes every time, I don't know about you, sure. but every time I go to like run the piece before, like not even, I haven't even competed yet, but I will just, I'll be sitting at work and be like, I have to do my competition piece after work today. And I'll just have like a pit in my stomach all day, like knowing I have to go and run that piece. So that part of it's not fun for me. Like the fun right. part for me with pole is learning new things or learning new things for my students and teaching classes. So I think I want to focus more on that. Um, at yeah. this point, because the lead up to the competition is not super fun for me. <laughs> it's, it's really not. <laughs> not and like, but like you said, the stage part, fun after fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Like they're, they're probably the only fun bits for me. Hey, what's up, everyone? I just wanted to interrupt this episode with a quick little bit of information on my online business, The Pole Destroyers. If you haven't found out about it already, The Pole Destroyers is an online platform which provides strength and conditioning coaching for pole 
online from the comfort of your own home. And I can't tell you how many pole dancers I meet on a daily basis who aren't able to achieve some of their dream moves because they aren't strong enough. And now you can be by training from the comfort of your own home with this strength and conditioning program. Many people got a lot of success from my 31 day program, which you are able to access on demand. And you can also do live classes with me. But the thing I love about this program is that each class has an individual theme. So we do all sorts of different theme classes. We have the Polar Stories quiz. We have choreo cardio. We have flip the coin, dice of doom. My cat Roxy teaches a class. Yes, cats can teach conditioning. You will be gobsmacked. It's just a really good, fun way to do conditioning at a really cost-effective price. So if that's something that you're interested in, please do go and check out thepoledestroyers.com or head to my Instagram at Dan Rosenpole and feel free to DM me with any questions you have. Anyway, let's get back to the podcast. So PSO, I'm just intrigued to know um, what your thoughts are on that because there was that massive whole drama yeah. around that guy who died at uh, one of the PSO competitions. And I know a lot yeah. of people were really, really angry at the time and not a lot has really been said, probably due to legal reasons. But, um, and obviously, as much as I'd love to get Amy on here to talk about it, <laughs> I know she probably wouldn't be <laughs> able to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, what's your view on supporting and entering the competition now after that's happened? Well, I had actually already signed up for PSO Zurich before all of that happened. So right. then I was like, man, I don't know if I should still do it. Like, I, but then again, I mean, I wasn't there, first of all. So I, I don't really have anything to say to that respect. And I feel so sad for the family and the, the person, obviously, that this, that everything happened to and for the community that's missing, um, missing him. Um, but I wasn't there, so I kind of stay out of it a little bit. Um, I don't have any judgment because I, I don't know how it was handled since I wasn't actually in that room. Um, but I do think, you know, leading up to doing Zurich, I did get emails saying, you know, about, um, you know, if there was going to be personnel there that would be helpful if something did happen. And I did notice people there. So I do think there's been some changes. I just don't mm. think a lot has been said probably for legal reasons. Yeah. Um, and so at the time I thought the whole thing was so super sad, but I did kind of stay out of it. Cause I'm just like, I wasn't there. I didn't see what happened. I hear the stories from people that were there, but again, it's all just stuff that I heard um, behind the scenes kind of thing. So I, I was, I thought the whole thing was just really sad for the community that mm. that had to happen at all. You know, do things like that make you, change your mind about ever wanting to compete in it again like i know i only say that because i know a lot of people were like oh i wouldn't compete in that competition now after this and the way they paneled it blah, blah blah like what's your stance on that me personally i um if i wanted to compete again and pso happened to be the competition that fit my needs at the time i would still i would still do it um just because in the past like thinking you know before this all happened i've competed in athletic events not just pole i was also really into um, distance running before and i never really questioned the. Me i mean maybe i didn't question it because i just trusted the organizations that i was i was working with at the time but i never questioned that end of it because i always think i mean i could get hit by a car walking across the street and and something terrible can happen just you know on my own time so i never really questioned it um in a situation with like you know an athletic event even though maybe i should have and i was maybe younger and naive and didn't think about that so i don't think it would change my mind on competing with them i might be more inclined to ask questions mm. um, before competing at this point and just be more aware of what i'm signing up for um so that i can you know make a decision for what's best for me if that makes sense yeah i mean it's a really tough one i think it's tough. You know, it is tough because it's that whole thing of like, you know, I feel like in life, the only person that can be responsible for you is you, right? But you exactly. also hope that events like this where you pay a lot of money would have a bit more... Like protection. Yeah, I mean, oh, don't be wrong. Yeah, like, and, the, it, and like, it might not have even saved his life. Don't be wrong. Like having a IED... Yeah. No, not IED. What's the money called? <laughs> that, an AED. <laughs> Isn't but it, an IED could also save lives. Right. Is that, isn't an IED like a bomb or something? <laughs> yeah, yes. So what are they again? What is it you guys call them? We call it an AED. AED. <laughs> but yeah, so like, even if there had been an AED there, you know, <laughs> it's not to say that it would have saved his life. I think it's more yeah, just like, no. it would have been nice to have been like, right, we do actually have some right. medical professionals here. But, you know, I'm just trying to think of some of the comps I've entered in the UK. I, I don't know many that have 
have had you know yeah. that or sort like of did you career. even think about like asking about it before you know like I would have never thought to ask that and maybe we take for granted like I take for granted I'm young and, and healthy so I should be okay so I don't think about those things but now it's something that would be more on my radar for, for sure, sure to ask and ask questions and I think yeah. as well probably I mean correct me if I'm wrong that's probably the first person that's ever died at a poll competition am I right probably I, I think I've you're not right. heard of any I others think you're right I have not heard of any others no, and it's one of those no. things where yeah maybe they were ill prepared I agree with that and I do think you know that it's bad and they should have been more prepared. But at the same time, we can only learn from our mistakes, right? And it's that whole thing right, of like exactly. now, I think now if it happened at a competition, oh, absolutely. We, with all the competition story should know because it's completely. Yeah. yeah, if it's yeah. happened and everyone has been made agree. aware of it, it should yeah. never happen again, of course. No. Um, but yeah, it's, it's such a tough one, isn't it? Because I feel like on the internet with things like that, you know, people, like when I when I posted about it, I kind of just really wanted to hear from. Is it Amy? Opinions. Who, is it Amy? Yeah, 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 it's Amy. Yeah, yeah, she's the. I'm more just wanted to hear from Amy and the organisation. I just wanted it to be a bit of a human experience because I just I felt like it was really sad that nothing was said at all. That was really why I, I shared it. So I was yes. like, I wish, so, you know, even if she just said like, listen guys, we're so sad as well. We're so absolutely sad. And we've learned so much we from this, else, but we but can't so, say so anything. Sad. Exactly. And she yes. did, but it took way too long. And then it was A like, time. and when she did post, it was all blaming other people. I just, it just, yeah. I don't know. I didn't like it. It just really didn't sit right. And I just, um, yeah, it's, but like we said, we don't know how to deal with situations like this because they've never happened before. Yeah, and I'd like to think that, before. you know, let's hope that other competitions have learned from it. But yeah, I was just really intrigued that, yeah, like I said, I was just really intrigued to see what your thoughts were on it and stuff and just see where you were at. Like, I mean, and the other thing for me is because before pole and actually when I started pole, I was, I talk about running a lot because I was really into distance running and I ran a lot of marathons. And even though they are on it with like having, um, you know, medical personnel everywhere. There's been so many people who have died at the finish line of like a heart attack or something like that. And it wasn't, you know, the organization's fault it was the circumstance. I, I actually ran the Boston marathon the year that it blew up. And, um, you know, they didn't blame the Boston Marathon for not being prepared for a terrorist attack. So I feel like you, you don't know how to plan. Like you said, you don't know how to plan for these situations until it actually happens sometimes. So I think now moving forward, as long as they look at it as a learning experience, um, mm. you know, I think that it's fine. They, people should still, you know, if they want to compete with PSO, compete with PSO. And if you don't want to, there's other definitely other competitions out there now. So many. <laughs> yeah, for sure. There are a lot. There's a lot of choice. Um, yeah. injuries. Have you ever suffered any injuries before? Have you ever dealt with like long term <laughs> injury, like, like big, big injuries? Um, usually I have like little tweaks and things like that. And I try to, you know, I, I try not to jinx myself. So I'm like, Oh, I don't even know if I want to answer this question. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but usually like injury wise, if I, it's, you know, for me, it's always age. I feel something coming on. I just have to like either change my training focus or if I you know fell or something like that. Um, but when I deal with an injury, for me, the biggest part is always the mental end of it is the hardest part because if you have to actually take a break and stop training, um, that's the part where I really struggle. So I'm always like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to get back to where I was. And I mean, normally I find if at any time I've been injured, if I have to take time off, if I'm really good about like you know, stretching and doing any kind of rehab or going for massages and things like that, mm -hmm. I'll end up coming back stronger, which I always have to, you know, mentally have to tell myself in the moment, it's really difficult for me. So nothing major where I've had to like, you know, take a huge, long, long break. But I think part of it is knowing my body and knowing like, oh, I feel a tweak here. I shouldn't, you know, train that same trick over and over and over. Or it's not going to end well for me. <laughs> or, oh, I fell out of that. Maybe I should take a break from that for a little uh -huh. while. <laughs> so you've never had any like big falls or any like serious accidents? Oh. No, no, I'm definitely, I was almost sent you one this weekend. Actually, I had a big fall. I was going to send it to you. Um, no way. Yeah. What, so what happened? <laughs> yeah. What were you doing? Something so dumb. I was just doing um, some conditioning. It was so dumb. I was conditioning and doing grip changes on my non-dominant side. And I've never done that before. So I was like, oh, I'm going to do some just elbow to cup grip. And I was so proud of myself that I did a bunch of them. So I was like, oh, I'm going to take a video of it. And as soon as I turned the camera on, I did one and I just went right down. I don't know what happened. Like literally like let go of the pole and I was on the ground. <laughs> it was funny. And you got it on video? I do have it on video. I can um, send it to you. I'm going to be, I'm going to be needing that video. <laughs> 
<laughs> can never have I'll enough content for poll lols, babes, okay? Can never have enough content. <laughs> I start picking up my phone now, like, I'll send it to you. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, um, I've been really lucky as well. I don't know about you, but I feel like now, I mean, I have had a couple of bad ones. I had one really bad yeah. one. My neck's not been the same ever since. But oh. um, and I landed, like, on my neck. Um, but, like... That happened once to me, too. That's the worst when you land. Ooh, yeah. I literally was doing, like, a backflip off the pole, and I just, like, I didn't rotate enough. And as I landed onto the... Thank God, I had this massive pile oh. of crash rods underneath me. And, um, oh yeah, I landed God. onto my oh neck, my and I kind of, like, backward rolled. But because it did that, like, full, like, crunch, oh. I was like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Horrible. Really, really You're bad. lucky that... Yeah, that's tough. Oh Real my gosh, lucky. neck scare me so much. I feel like now, though, the problem is more so that I'm getting to an age where I just get, like, just aches and pains. Like, you know, nothing – I don't yeah. really get injured anymore. That's I do I think aches and pains. Yeah. <laughs> I think definitely, like, when I started teaching the online conditioning, I know it sounds really crazy, but I noticed my body started getting injured a lot less, which really showed me – how much I wasn't training my bad side. Oh God, I was, I used <laughs> no, to No, think... that's why I was conditioning my bad I side know. this weekend because I'm like, my left arm just feels so weak lately. And I'm like, all right, conditioning. I always say to my students, I'm like, listen, the reason why I'm getting you to do this is because honestly, like I learned the hard way. Like my back yeah. was, my osteopath used to tell me how out of line my spine was and stuff. And I thought it was from bad stretching technique. But actually, now I look back and think, I wonder if it was because I wasn't training my bad side enough. It would, it's like the equivalent of going you, yeah. to the gym and doing a bicep curl on one arm. Why would you do that? Yeah. So, and I'm like, no, so know, why? So bad. Yeah, like, I'm like, why was I not? Do, do you know what I mean? Whereas now, a lot of, oh. especially the, the main base movements, I mean, don't worry, I can't do everything on both sides. Of course, like, there's a few no. moves which, you know, Janeiro, I'm lucky to get that on my good side some days. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so it's just one of those, it's one of those things. Like, there, of course, there are some, but there was some no, like I'm base very movements. one sided with certain things yeah sure. certain things are fine on both sides but then recently and I haven't been conditioning the way I like to I like to at least once a week one, one like one day it's just about conditioning nice. and I wasn't doing that probably since I, oh gosh it's been a long time um since I've done that so that's why I kind of started again because like you with age the aches and pains mm -hmm. they come out of nowhere and I don't even know what maybe I did so I'll just have to like you know ease up but it's usually I would say because I'm one-sided yeah, so for sure. I think naturally that. as pole dancers, though, of course we are going to be a little bit one-sided, aren't we? We're always going to oh, go yeah. to our dominant for side. Sure. It's not like at the yeah. gym, when you go to the gym, of course, if you're going to do bicep curls, you always do both arms. It's you just, do both you sides. just, you right. always do that. But with pole, yeah. like, I guess it's like dancers only pirouetting on one foot. They're always going to have a better right. pirouette, right? And I guess it's the same yep. with pole dancers. We've got our strong arm. We've got our pirouette <laughs> side. It's the same right thing, now. right? Um, yep. So moving on a little bit, have you ever lost your pole mojo? And if so, why? Oh, yeah. I feel like um, uh, it's like for me ebbs and flows, like where sometimes I'm like super into it and I want to learn – I mean, try to learn new things as much as I can at this point. And like, there's, you know, at this, you know, I don't train with a lot of people anymore. So for me, getting motivated is sometimes a, a hard part. So I want to like come home from work and just want to sit on the couch or like cook a nice dinner and just be like, this is, I want to be done for the day. Um, but then I feel like I, I can't always just do that. So I feel for me, I, I'll go, I'll have like ups and downs and it's usually whatever's happening in my life. Like I'm getting ready to go back to school a week from today. So I'll probably be a little sad in about a week and maybe uh, a little bit less energetic. So I, for me, that'll be kind of like a time where I'm maybe, um, you know, feeling a little bit more less interested in full. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the summer, I love that I have the time off in the summer. So I do a lot of training and I get really into it. Um, in the summertime or like when I'm traveling and I come home from a trip, I usually feel super motivated because I just spent like a lot of time with a lot of awesome people who are you know, doing great things. And I'm like, oh, I want to be able to go back and spend time with them again and teach, teach with them, teach them again. So it makes me want to come home and work harder. So for me, it's just like ups and downs. There's never been like one point where I'm like, I'm just done. Um, but there's definitely been times where I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing this mm. <laughs> or I'm just tired and I'm old. <laughs> I'm too old for this. <laughs> so you've never had any slumps where you kind of like lost your motivation and just like not wanted to pull at all or. Um, I definitely do. Uh, I'd say a couple times where it usually coincides with going back to school. Um, but usually I still have to get myself on the pole for teaching purposes because I always want 
um, to have something new. So even if it's not for my online classes, if it's for in the studio, mm. I feel like I at least have to get started and, uh, you know, get something done for that. Um, so that is kind of what saves me. So teaching, I guess, is really what kind of has always pulled me out of that slump whenever I've gotten to a point where I'm like, I'm just, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, sure. But I've never gotten to a point where I'm like, I don't like actually want to do it anymore. It's usually just like, I feel tired, lazy, maybe burned out a little bit. Um, and that's when I kind of start to lose a little bit of interest. What what tips would you give for people who are struggling with like motivation and like struggling like with maybe they've lost their pole mojo, they're just not feeling it anymore. Maybe they're coming back post postpartum, maybe they're post COVID even. Like, I mean, this talk yeah. about post COVID, so many people had lost it. I lost at my studio so many students to COVID. So many of them oh, just yeah. didn't come back. They just totally they lost their mojo when it came to anything Such fitness, really, which is quite sad. Yeah. Um, you know, what's, what's your advice to people who are just like struggling with being motivated with pole and like getting back into it? Well, I would say first, if you're somebody who like actually took a really significant break and took time off, you just have to keep in mind that you're coming back. Yeah, you'll have muscle memory and you will probably come back stronger if you listen to your body and listen to your mind. Like, you know, you have to train yourself to think I'm a different pole dancer now than I was X amount of months ago. I can't just expect to hop back on and immediately do that handspring that I had just gotten before I took a break. And, you know, maybe I need to go and revisit like a, a lower level class or something like that to get myself started again. And that's okay because in the end, it's all about having fun and feeling good about what you're doing. So it's not, you know, to me, that's what it always was. That's what started a uh, pull for me was having fun with friends and, you know, feeling good about what I was doing and feeling fit. So as long as you're feeling those things and you're enjoying yourself, you're not doing it wrong. And so coming out of a slump, I think you have to change your mindset a little bit. If you were used to pulling at a super high level to come back to that super high level is entirely possible, but you just have to be, I think you have to be really patient with yourself. And mentally, I think that can be really challenging. Um, to take that step back, especially if you still have friends who stuck with it while you took a break and you see your friends advancing. Um, mm. But they're going to, you know, your friends are going to want you to train with them again, too. So they're all going to hopefully be supportive of your return journey. Um, and if you're struggling with motivation for me, especially coming into the new school year, what I tend to do is I'll just go back to whatever I was doing a year ago and remake that combo. Just I'm going to get myself. It's something I know I did. My, you know, year ago self was able to do it. So I might be capable. Maybe I'm not capable of it. Maybe it's something, or maybe I can make it a combo that I change and I make it harder. And then I see the progress just by doing something like that. Um, so I like to look back at a lot of um, my old stuff. And then I also always, I always look to Instagram for inspiration because I mean, there's so many fabulous people out there that I can just open Instagram and be like, wow, it's overwhelming too. Cause then you're like, oh my gosh, everybody's so good. But I also find it like super motivating, especially if somebody you followed for a long time. I followed you, you for so long um, to see your progress and see how over the years you've progressed. And you know, other pole dancers that I've followed for a long time um, is really inspiring to me. So I open up Instagram and I see those people and they're they're still out there doing it so that inspires me as well oh thanks i mean i am um, it's funny <laughs> as you say that because i feel like i don't know about you but i feel like i've hit a bit not a slump as in how i feel about pole i still really love pole um and actually i regained my love for it when i started dancing in heels and doing choreo and doing oh, that yes. as more my fun thing i really enjoy making choreography change of focus that always yeah. would change yeah change of focus is a big deal too that really helped me but yeah. it's but talking about you know when you're like oh seeing your progress but actually i mean how do you feel about your progress because i don't know about you but i feel like i hit a point in pole um, and actually it was around about that time that I landed on my neck because we were trying to do, um, I don't know if you know, I think it's called a palm flip or something. It's like, you know, like when you do those castaways from the pole, when you're holding the pole, facing the pole, you swing your legs yeah. back and then you back flip away from the pole. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to learn that. Yeah. I mean, way above my, my gymnastic That's ability, amazing, if though. I'm being honest. Oh my gosh. Like, and when I was learning gainer flip and stuff and I, and I managed oh to gosh, get that. Goal. Right, exactly. But, and I managed That's to get amazing. that move, but I always remember thinking like, That's I incredible. don't feel. I don't feel incredibly safe doing it. It didn't. Yeah. It felt like I was pushing my body beyond a limit that it didn't want to go past. Yeah. So, and I feel like really ever since then, I've kind of like all the kind of like hard moves I want to do. I feel like I've kind of done them before or I can still do them, yeah. but I don't feel yeah. like, I don't feel like I can go any further. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm not trying to say, oh, I, I'm no, the best. Like I've a... reached my peak. No. I just mean like for my own personal for level. Your body. Yeah, I just don't feel like 
I can go any further than that. Not because I don't want to. I just don't know that it would feel safe, if I'm honest with you. I feel I think, like well, it would feel safe. Really, I, that, for me, especially because I do train alone quite often, I tend to stick with things. And I mean, if you look at my Instagram, a lot of the stuff is very similar because uh -huh. I tend to stick with things that I feel safe doing. So the only time I really learn something new or work on something that is out of my comfort level is when I'm working with somebody um, like training with like when I was just away, I was visiting different friends all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, I'm visiting you. You're really good at this flip. I can't do this flip. Let's work on this today. So kind of just like, I will only train those moves that make me feel like I'm out of my comfort zone when I'm with somebody who makes me feel comfortable, um, that can spot me safely and that I can work with them on, on that trick. And then maybe I'll take away something that maybe I won't do the trick on my own or won't do um, whatever it is on my own, but I'll at least do maybe some of the conditioning for it so that if mm -hmm. I have the opportunity to work with somebody again, and I mean, again, a little older. So I think like some of that just comes with being cautious for with my age as well, because I want to be able to keep doing it. You keep saying um, so that. How, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? What's... I'm 40. <laughs> oh, my God. You're talking like you're freaking in your 60s. I'm like, come on. I'm like, I hope 40 isn't that bad because I'm only five years off it. No, so. I do. I actually, I love 40 so far, but I like always feel like, I don't want to say age is like a limiting factor. It's definitely not. But I feel like, like we talk about tweaks that just show mm. up out of nowhere. I feel like I'm just more cognizant of that. Like with my, with my actual training and trying to learn something new. It's maybe not that I don't want to try it. It's that I don't want to hurt myself doing it of because course. I want longevity. And oh my God. Sport. I'm exactly the same. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my God, yeah. like this looks so cool, but I really don't want to hurt myself. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. But you know what, as well, I feel like I've gotten to a point in my career where I'm just like, I can't afford to have hurt myself. <laughs> no, there was, I there was like a day yeah. where, like, I, back when I was more of an amateur level, where if I did injure myself, it didn't really matter. I had a full time job. Like, right. I wasn't right. relying on it as an income. Whereas now I'm like, God, like, if I actually hurt myself, that's like my, that's the income. money, the money yeah, that I pay money. my bills with fucking fucked <laughs> so like yes. yeah so it's, so it's really it is scary it is scary it's so scary. i just sometimes think like is it really worth it and then i'm like i, nah. I think the same thing <laughs> and i'm not doing it full time but i mean i love that i've been able to travel and teach and do camps and things like that and so if i like sign a contract with somebody and say oh yeah i'm gonna come teach for you um, in this country in this month and then I get hurt. I mean, I, I w really want to be careful for that reason. So oh, if the sure. chance ever came that I could quit my job and do it full time, I would definitely be scared for that. But at this point, it's more about like committing and saying I'm going to do something. And then like, if I got hurt, I mean, I know that people would probably understand that, but I just wouldn't want to let somebody down and, and not yeah. be able to, you know, do what I said I was going to do. Yeah. I mean, it probably helps both of us that we've got partners. So it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. But, I mean, don't get me wrong, yet. like, I wouldn't want to financially rely on him <laughs> because no. I don't... And I wouldn't want to put that in, in his... I uh, wouldn't want to give that responsibility to him either. It's no, of fair. course not. And I just, yeah, I think, um, it, yeah, it's one of those things where I'm just like, I've been quite independent for a very long time, so the thought of actually having to rely yeah. on someone else for money, oh, no, thank you. Oh, no, <laughs> thank you. And that's why I just no. feel like I've gotten to a point where maybe I'm not progressing with my level, but I'm always trying new stuff. And we're so yeah. lucky with pole that when you get to intermediate advanced level, there's so much. There's so, so much, many yeah. things. I feel like I see Tr things every day. Transition styles, mm. yeah. I feel like I see so at much. least one thing every day where I'm like, oh, I'm not seeing that. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah. I just like start, start scrolling and I'm like, wow, that's brand new to me. <laughs> Although I tell you what's really funny. I don't know if this started happening to you yet, but sometimes posts will come up from years ago and it will be a trick and I'll be like, I don't even remember doing oh, that. I know. I'm like, oh my God, I thought, and maybe I trained like a few months just back and I had thought I'd done something new that I hadn't done before, but actually I've done it years back and I totally All forgot the time. <laughs> I'm like, All wow, I'm like, okay, God, actually. But... Or I'll like scroll back to like get some inspiration just for like something that I, you know, I'm looking for something to teach in like one of my more, um, you know, less advanced classes. So I'm like, let me go back to when I first started teaching kind of back to basics. <laughs> And then I'll pull up like a combo and I would have maybe just done something similar. And I thought it was like brand new. And I'm like, wait, I taught that combo like four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. That happens to me that all the time. I swear. All the time. It, um, it does. I want to talk to you about your social media and how you built up a following. Uh, I'm really intrigued now more, even more so because <laughs> like I'm more just intrigued to know how you did it and where you found the time. I mean, like how, how did you build up your following on social media? Well, kind of before, it was sort of kind of starting to take off a little bit before um, COVID. And again, it was always just 
I always posted whatever I learned in the studio that day or what I learned at home because I do train a lot. I enjoy it. And so I forget what I do. So I always want to go back and, and like maybe revisit it a year later or something like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was always just posting for me and um, I was public because I like the community aspect where I could go out and like see other people's things. They could see mine and can get inspiration from each other. Um, and then during COVID, when I started teaching online, I was teaching through um, a studio that doesn't exist anymore in our area. Um, and so I was teaching for, for them and people from online started joining the classes, which was interesting because we hadn't had anybody um, you know, join the studio classes from outside at that point. So then those classes started to get full. And I think just between that and I was using TikTok at the time. I don't use it anymore just because I find I keep getting blocked on there. But I kind of had them like I had my Instagram profile in my TikTok. And I think because of TikTok, um, I started getting uh, quite a, a, a following through that. And then it just kind of kept on pretty much going pretty steadily from there. I'd say over the last year, maybe it's kind of been a little bit slower, but I think that's just the algorithm changes a little bit. And I mean, I don't really change too much about what I post because I feel like here I am. This is what I am. Yeah. Um, and so maybe people get sick of what I'm posting, but um, I do think do that the algorithm is a mystery. Even oh, for oh my God, it so is. I, I sometimes <laughs> post something and I just think, it. Why has that gotten so many views? But this really cool thing has got nothing. Yeah. I just can no, never make sense it. of it ever. I just no. don't understand it. And I just, do you know what? I'm just really grateful that I'm not getting all of these like, oh, we can't show your content to these people. I'm, I'm not getting that. Yes, I, I haven't gotten that any recently. I, I did get it the other day on another profile of my uh, my online businesses um, page. Okay. The like the um, oh no, what's it on Polos? It was on polos, I think, actually. It was uh, either on that one. Yeah, I think the one on the pole destroyers, I appealed it and I got I got it back. Not yeah, the I've appealed a few and they usually give it back to Yeah, I, so I appealed it when they said we can't show it to new followers. And then on the pole destroyers, they, I think it was, I was only advertising a guest class and it was Caramelora. And obviously she's quite sexy, okay. isn't she? So I thought, do you know what, yeah, I'm just going to delete yeah, the post because yeah. she'd taught anyway. She'd already taught. So yeah, I'd delete it. Happens. And then and then they got rid of it and then I was all green again. But the yeah. other day they did polos and I just saw, I'm just going to press appeal because it was like six of them, I thought. And I thought, I'm not going to delete all six posts, but I'm just going to appeal yeah. it. I thought, do you know what? I get shadow banned and stuff on that page all the time anyway. I really oh, just God. like, polos is kind of just like a bit of fun for me. Yeah, um, it's, you know, it's fun for me too. So right. <laughs> Hey, what's up everyone? Sorry to interrupt your podcast. I just wanted to come on and tell you really quickly about one of our sponsors for this podcast, which is Superfly Honey. So tell me, do you want to be super fly, honey? Well, honey, of course you do. <laughs> well, if you want to be super fly, you need to make sure you get yourself some super fly, honey grip leggings. Now, super fly, honey specialize in these grip leggings that you may have seen all over Instagram at the moment. Everybody's wearing them. And these are great for anyone who like to just keep themselves a little bit more covered up. Maybe you're polling in a cold country and you need some extra grip because your skin just isn't giving you the grip you need. Well, Superfly Honey have got you covered with their grip leggings. Now, they told me to give an honest review and I did have a pair sent to me and I can tell you the only thing that was sad about them was that the pair they sent me didn't fit me. <laughs> they were too small and they were too short because I needed their tall range. So if you're like me and you're a tall bitch too, guess what? They've got their own tall range. They obviously just didn't realize that I was a six foot glamazon. So they sent me their tall range and now I have one of their tall pairs of leggings and they fit so snug. There's no movement on them. I didn't feel like they were going to cause any friction. They were super tight to the legs, so they felt really comfortable. And for any of you out there who like to stay covered up, these are amazing for you and definitely an option to try out. So go and check out Superfly Honey. So I wanted to talk to you about like building a following, like a social media following and like you know, how you did it. I'm even more intrigued to know because obviously you have so much that you do, you know, teaching online, teaching at a school, teaching at a studio and like all these other things, traveling the world and teaching. Like how, how did you build a following? Um, yeah, literally that's the question. Like how did you build a following? I'm just intrigued to know. I'm always intrigued to know how people did it because it's really hard out there on social media now. Yeah, I feel like, uh, so I feel like I kind of hit it at the right time, if that makes sense. 
Um, and for me, it was right before COVID was well, kind of when things sort of started to take off. Um, I was posting a little bit more regularly. I was teaching pretty regularly at the studio where I was teaching at the time. Um, and then once COVID hit, I started teaching online. So then um, we were offering online classes through the studio. And a lot of my uh, my followers started taking them through the studio. I didn't even realize that people were paying attention to that. Um, and so once I started teaching online, that really seemed to start, like people would maybe start share, oh, this person teaches online. So maybe sharing my profile that way. And then um, I did a little bit with TikTok for a while. Like I, um, during COVID, I was using it. I don't use it anymore because I just, every time I post something, I get blocked. So I'm just like, I don't even know why I'm using this app. Um, but during COVID, I had a pretty big following um, through TikTok and I put my Instagram handle um, in my TikTok bio. So that, I don't know if maybe just connecting the two. And I think I just got really lucky with the timing. Like it was unfortunate um, with obviously what was going on with COVID, but I was home and I was able to train and I was still able to share what I was doing. And so I think people who were still trying to stay connected and stay involved with Pull, um, you know, during that time, uh, that's maybe where I, I got kind of lucky in that respect. So it was um, unfortunate timing for the rest of the world, but it did help my business out. Um, and then from there, uh, at this point, it's been a little bit more, I feel like, kind of leveled off a bit, especially with, um, you know, not understanding the algorithm and how it really works, uh, which I should mm -hmm. understand better as a computer teacher, but for the life of me, cannot figure it out. Um, you it know, just, there's little things you can do here and there, but <laughs> it's always yeah, changing. Yeah, I mean, I just, it's, it's literally so random with with all social media i think it's yeah you just never know what's going to hit and what's not sometimes the most random things that i post will, will hit and it'll be like a hundred comments or more and i'm like wow that yeah. did really really well and then another one that i think well that's going to probably do really well because it's like got some really cute shapes and whatever it'll get nothing and i'll be like nothing. Oh, i always how find do like you... short oh. quick static combos that are attainable for people those are the things that do the best yeah so like if i yeah. always want to like put something out and get like a you know a response that's the re that's the one i usually get a big response from yeah it's funny actually a lot of um the stuff that so sometimes my choreos will get like especially if i do like a transition choreo people yeah. love when i do those yes. so when i do the fun transition choreos people love those um and like uh if i do well funny videos obviously if i do anything funny people tend to like those but um as well it tends to be like you said the static combos short com yeah. achievable combos achievable. yeah yeah i feel like that's kind of my thing i think it's funny nick me and nick both agree on this because he's very similar <laughs> <love> like <laughs> yeah like nick is the same we both we both deal really in creating yeah. and you know doing achievable combos with moves yeah. that we've done for a long time and just finding different pathways for them and you know yeah and just doing tricks that are kind of achievable would look really achievable. cool so yeah. it's just kind of like my my main focus i'd say even for like teaching and stuff it's one of the reasons why i think as a teacher i do all right because people know they're going to learn something fun that's yeah. actually doable Attainable. from me yeah yeah for sure Agree. Agree. i think with with the algorithms wise i just think like yeah it's just impossible to know what's post but do you get any of your content blocked or anything like that like do you get you know yeah. these little messages that come up that say oh you we can't show your stuff to people or whatever you know do you get I any do. of that and the weird thing is it's usually for music and a lot i would say like most of the time it's like an old post before instagram started incorporating music in the platform yeah so it's usually that but i've had a few where Instagram will take them down, but I'm using their music. So that one, I'm oh. always like, I don't understand why I'm using exactly the tools that you gave me. And now you're right. telling me it's wrong. So that's, I, you know, I'm pretty, I, I would love to post, like, I don't really do a lot with heels because I'm actually very uncoordinated off of the poll, but also with teaching high school, I kind of don't post a lot of that, um, just to kind of keep it a little bit, um, you know, more, if, if anybody from work looked at it, uh, if they took a look at it, it wouldn't look super um, crazy to kids, things like that. But I feel like for me, it's always music, not necessarily like what I'm wearing. Yeah, I think so. Well, the music thing is really weird because I mean, like so you said, like some, sometimes I'll use their music and it'll be like, oh, we can't show. So it's not that they're blocking me. Like I noticed yeah. that they're saying like, it can't be shown to people in these countries. It's, and then yes. you click on the list and it's like Russia and everybody, Belarus and that's yes, literally yes. it. Or um, everybody, like, that one always blocks. Well, you say everybody, but actually, if you look at the actual list of countries, they're not really like big 
I know no. that sounds terrible. Like, no, you're like no, big, yeah. well-known countries where my main following are like, you know, Australia's right. not on there. Like all of the European countries are on there. So on there, it tends yeah. to be really random places. So yeah. I'm just like, oh, I guess all of my massive Russian following will have <laughs> to miss this gonna... one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They'll be, the Russians will be so sad they missed They're out so on this sad. content. <laughs> yeah. But the Russians are going to be so sad that they're it's missing so out on this six foot man dancing in heels, I'm sure. But, um, I mean, their exotic dancing is just never going to be the same if they don't see you. <laughs> right. Exactly. So this is the thing is like, and, and the women in Russia that probably would see my stuff would probably sit and be like, what is this beginner <laughs> shit? Because what they do in, in Russia is so nuts. freaking ridiculous. So freaking cool, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'm sure they're not missing my content whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do sometimes, um, so I, I get it, I got it the other week where Polos had had a load of posts flagged up, um, for like, oh, uh, inappropriate content or whatever it was. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to appeal it because I just thought, what do I have to lose? And if they decide that yeah. they're going to block my content and not show it to new people, then <laughs> so be it, whatever. Yeah. I mean, we don't really post anything of a sexual nature on there. No, it's obviously always... mainly fails. And I just yeah. thought, if fail army can get away with it, why can't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, I just appeal it. I actually haven't heard anything since. I need to check. So maybe I won it. I don't know. I need to check. But with polos. They'll tell you I... if you win it. Because a lot of times I'll even appeal the music stuff. And if I win it, they do tell you. But it's usually it takes like a week or two. Well, it, sometimes I've noticed if you win it, it will just go into your notifications, but it'll be, it's not very obvious that it's there. So you have to like oh, really look for it. Look for but it. also on polls, we get quite a lot of comments and a lot of notifications. So mm. sometimes it's really easy to miss stuff. So I have to go yeah. and find other ways of looking for stuff. But yeah, yeah um, I remember just thinking like, what's the it's not like you're showing my stuff to new people anyway because i look i look at my um my stats on the poll and stuff and i just think none of this is being no. shown to new people so yeah. you weren't showing my stuff to new people in the first place so matter, yeah. uh, exactly <laughs> this is actually what we use tuesday topic for is because tuesday Topic is a great way to get engagement higher for yeah. um for what's it called for like your other Getting, posts. So right. if you get people chatting, it kind of tells Instagram that, you know, people are interested oh, people in the content. people are actually interested, yeah. Right. So that's why we'll, we'll ask questions and we let people do Tuesday topics because it gets people talking and it helps us with our engagement and stuff. So we're kind of all helping each other. But, but yeah, it's, it's a freaking nightmare on it social is, media. It's, it's, it's so hard. Yeah. But we're so I'm reliant just, on it. We're so, so reliant, reliant on, it. on it. I feel like I yeah. had a lot of time too, like during COVID when I was home and then as a teacher, um, and I teach computers. I went back to school that following year and I actually had to go to the building every day, but I didn't have kids in my classes. So I sat in an empty classroom for a whole year. So I felt like I could spend that entire year engaging a lot on social media. And I was able to like also boost my following that way because I was able to participate the way that you're kind of mentioning and like, you know, starting conversations and things yeah. like that. And I feel like that's another reason why it's probably leveled off a little bit as well, because I don't have the same kind of time during the school year um, because mm. I'm, I'm working. <laughs> Did you do any stuff to build it like, um, you know, challenges or anything like that? Or was there any, was there any like particular video that you just got like thousands of followers from? Like anything went viral, nothing like that. It was very quite like, no, it was very organic. Good. I feel like it was a pretty, like it, it was steady. Once it kind of started, it was a very steady growth. And then I would say, I got to a point where it's sort of like leveled off a little bit and then it's just kind of, um, you know, grown a little bit since then, if that makes sense. I feel like it was, what are you the at posting, now? um, I think like 88, maybe something like that. Right. Like I, so it's really yeah. funny because I mean, I'm, I'm at just over a hundred, right. There. But yeah. when I, when I got to like, I think it was 60, 70, I felt like I just didn't move for ages. That's kind I of how like, I feel right now. It just doesn't move. Right. Not moving. But I also it's haven't so changed weird. what I've been doing. So it could be me as well. And I think that's what they do. I think they kind of test you a little bit to be like, right, come yeah. on, push yourself a bit but, harder. Yeah, push yourself a little harder. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. horrible. I just, <laughs> yeah, this is why I've just stuck at the same number for so long now. I, I've been like between 100 and 102 for probably over a year. I'm no, just I like, like, do you know what? I've been for like a year. Yeah, I'm just like, do you know what? It is what it is. Like, it's, my followers right, that yeah. I have are awesome and I'm, I'm happy with them. I'm just exactly. gonna, I'm just gonna live my best life with those people. If anyone <laughs> wants to join yes. that crew, come on and join come us. Come on and join. Yeah. <laughs> That's I just, where I am too. I feel like I, I'm, I love the people that I interact with now. I'm so happy with the people that have chosen to follow me that I'm just like, I'm lucky with what I have. I'm happy. 
What would you say are like the best tips for people who want to grow their following? Like what would your what would your tips be for people that want to become pole famous, get a social media following? What would you tell them to do? For me, I feel like because what worked for me was just posting consistently. So maybe, I mean, I didn't really say that, but I would make sure I posted at least once a day. So like I, when I started actually like actively trying to get a following, it was like, okay, once a day, post something. So I didn't want to like overload people and put too much out there. But once a day, I was made sure I would post. And around the same time, like I kind of figured out like, in the U.S., it's pretty good if you post in the morning because then people in, um, you know, the the uh, in Europe and the U.K., everybody's kind of like starting to wind down their workday at that point. So people are waking up here, they're scrolling. People, uh, you know, time wise, um, you know, in other parts of the world, are starting to like wind down from their day. So maybe consider the timing of your posts. I know when I'm in when I was uh, in Europe, I would post a little bit later in the day so that it would be like you know later for them when everybody was waking up at home. Um, so think yeah. about timing, and then also just think about um, you know who like. Be yourself because I think that's the other thing is when people like try to copy somebody else, not necessarily like I'm not saying like combos and stuff like that because we all, all you know, do that, but like where we kind of get inspiration, but just you have your own voice and just be you. Don't try to be somebody else who already has a following because people just they want to follow you for you, not if they want to follow that other person that you're trying to, um, you know, mimic, they're just going to go yeah. follow that other person. So I think being authentic was... is super important. I also think as well, like posting content of value is important. I always yes. talk about this, like content of value, I always say, but like stuff that people might save, stuff that people might send to other people, stuff that people might tag other people in. Mm -hmm. This is like, I definitely how I built my following, you know, like my challenges and stuff. I mean, challenges yes. really are what built my following up in the beginning. But yeah, like if I post something that's just a cute picture, and that's it. And I'm like, yeah, pictures photo. don't really do it. No, no one cares. Don't do it. So this is why when I post photos, I tend to only post if I've got something interesting to say or, or I yeah. want to start a conversation. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, if I just post photos, sometimes it would just get nothing. It's just like, no, that's not yeah, photos. I always post following. a picture on Sunday just because I'll do like, I, I'll do quite a bit of yoga as well. So I'll post like a shape or something like that. I don't expect any engagement on it, but it's more like, yeah, I'm still here. But also I was too tired to do anything else. Yeah. <laughs> so just, and do you just still post friends. every day? I try to. Some, I mean, I, I think I missed one this lady last week or something like that. But usually I try to post one once a day. I'll try to post. Have that's something. so good I, try, I, feel like I, try. I try I try yeah I try right. to um but sometimes it's really freaking hard so sometimes hard. I just get so busy during the day that I forget yeah. but what I need to do and I'm intrigued to know if you do this do you set up all your drafts and stuff so they're there and ready to go yeah I usually like if I especially because it's the summer and I have time so like mm. I'll train and I'll like you know maybe go sit like have a cup of coffee and watch through my training videos and save one that I liked and say, okay, I'm going to post this one, whatever, in a few days, whatever it is. I'll stick it in my drafts. I'll put music to it. I might not put like the actual text because I might want to put something different that day, but I have it like all ready to go and edited. And then I just have to add some text to it. Um, so, so that I can just. I did it. that once. And did you, you know I how sometimes, right, you know how Instagram <laughs> yeah. sometimes logs you out? Yep. And then I lost <laughs> and them all. Because, so. yeah, they're just gone. Because when you log back in, you have to recreate them all again. Yes. So now I'll only do it for up to three posts. That's so, like, I have three. That's what I do. It's three. Yeah. So it's the same. I'll, do, like, I'll have three in there. If I lose them, I can always just, they're on my phone. Yeah, so I can there. just, yep. but you know, when you've edited it, you've, people will probably listen to this like, oh God, like you take it so seriously. But, <laughs> no, but you know, it's, it's, like it's, it's a lot. Like, of work. Yeah, it's so annoying. It's so, it's annoying. so annoying. If you consider that a post, <laughs> When you consider the time that you took to train it, like that's a separate amount of time, but just to edit a post, write a good so caption, you know, do any editing you need to do on it, you know, find a songs put over, whatever you need to do, you're looking at a good 10, 15 minutes minimum, like really yeah. to, oh to get gosh. all that done. Do all your hashtags and like make sure people actually see it. Otherwise, what was the point of making it in the first yeah. place? If I, if I didn't want anyone to see it, I'd just not post it. No, but yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah nothing. Yeah, you know? it's, um, it's a lot of time. It, you're right. Yeah, it's, it's a, a, it's a harsh mistress is the old social media. <laughs> so yes. It really is very harsh. It's so, um, yeah, it what really is. It's like, it consumes your life. That's why it's so, I mean, hats off to you. How the hell you do that? And oh. all of the other things you do, I do not know. Um, oh. Last thing, last thing I wanted to talk to you about because we are almost running out of time. But um, well, how was COVID for you? How was like so that must have been quite life changing for you, I it guess. Was, yeah, it, it was like, life changing. I know it was a. It's hard because it was a difficult time, you know, in our in the world. I was lucky in my situation where 
Um, you know, my, my husband was laid off at the time, but that was okay because even though I was also home, I was technically still working from home. So we were both home together and, um, you know, we live, we have a house in, in Allentown and we were able to pretty much do everything, um, on our property and I have my pole and you know, he has his thing. So for me, COVID, um, wasn't the worst time ever, but I know business wise, it was not, um, the, the best time for everybody else. So I hesitate to say that because I know people really struggled during that time. Um, you know, and it, it was really difficult. So it wasn't terrible for me. I got to train a lot. Um, and I did get to teach a lot online. And I think, um, ultimately coming out of it, it was a good for me, it was a good thing because that's where I, you know, built up my follower base. That's where I started, you know, meeting online people where I would get to train um, or teach and then also get to go places after everything started to open up again. That's when I really started mm -hmm. to travel a bit more um, and teach over, uh, teach abroad. So that um, was definitely um, a positive for me. But then I think the negative is that it definitely changed um, the way that I was training because before COVID, I used to train with more people. So it was more uh, maybe social, but now I train from home a lot because I'm like, oh, well, instead of like driving to a studio, I could just go home and train after work. And then when I'm done, I can just walk downstairs and cook dinner instead of having to like drive an hour to get home or whatever it is from wherever yeah. I am. So there's a couple studios in the area, but um, you know, where I previously was training where that studio closed, it was, um, you know, close 40 minutes away. So that was a, you know, a long commitment if I was going to do that every day. So for me, it right. maybe, maybe boosted the Instagram and the traveling, but also maybe a little less social. So that part of it, um, was not a positive, I would say. And did your husband not class as a, um, we had like a thing we hear like key work as it was called. So people who had to keep working because their job was essential. Electrician, he was not sure. considered, no, he was not a key worker. He was off for six weeks. Yeah, that was even though he was an electrician, do people need the yeah. electrics though? No, it was four weeks, they do, but I mean, he was nobody was working, yeah, he wasn't wow. working, he wasn't. Uh, I think I don't think he even got called, I'm trying to think if he got called out to do anything even during that time, but everything was closed. Well, so actually, that I, I, um, maybe if he was doing more residential, he would have gotten called out, but he does commercial, so he works for a university right now. His, his uh. contractor is mainly at a university. Um, and so the university was closed, so they weren't obviously giving any business. So he he doesn't do any residential work at the at the moment. Maybe if he was working residentially, he might have um, he might have been in people's homes if they needed help. Right. Okay, so that makes sense. That, yeah, yeah, I kind of just assumed. I never you know, really thought about that either. Who said yeah, that? Like, you, know, oh, yeah no. you know, when you say electrician, you just instantly <laughs> assume that you just think, oh, cool, no. we just does like all the electrics around people's houses. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> No, he, he can, can do that as different as well, types. but he does more, yeah, commercial stuff. Yeah. Very, very useful yeah. and handy to have around the house, it I'm is. sure. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for coming on to my podcast oh, and chatting with me. You. Before you um, go, I want you just to give everyone like your Instagram handles, where they can find you. Give us a little plug before you go. Sure. Um, well, you can find me on Instagram at Ariel Alley. There's an underscore in between. Um, and uh, I am on TikTok. I just don't use it that often. It's the same name. It's Ariel Alley on there. I just don't go on there um, too often. And I'm Allison Fiorini on YouTube. But I, again, don't really post a lot on there. Unless you take my online classes, then um, I have private links that I send out from there. So you can find me in any of those places. And I would love to hear from you. Nice. Well, if you're not already following Ali, make sure you go and follow her <laughs> on Instagram. So yeah, she was always posting awesome stuff and I love seeing her stuff. So please keep Aww. posting. I don't, I don't always achieve some of them, but I, every <laughs> now and then you I can do. Achieve all of them. I'll come visit <laughs> every you and we'll now do and all then. of the things. <laughs> yes. Please come and visit us when yeah. you're here. Like do message me about that because I'd love no, to meet yeah, No, I'm planning on May. I'm, this is the goal to come your way. So I would definitely not visit the UK without stalking you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, Not I'm supposed Instagram. to. <laughs> What's actually quite hilarious is that in May I'm supposed to be going to Canada, so literally, like, we'll kind of we be going be from crossing. different. Yeah, <laughs> literally. But well, yeah, we'll but we'll see. Touch. Yeah. Yeah, of course. If you're well, in thank Canada, you so you much. Just come a little more south and visit me. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't come here, then maybe I just need to yeah. fly down to the US for a little bit, for sure. Or we meet <laughs> up for a ski trip one day, because I know you're also a skier. So yeah, nice but you're a good buddy. skier though. I've seen your videos. Oh, I'm not a good skier. I'll ski with anybody. <laughs> yeah, you'll like you'll have to like ski down, and I'll meet you down there. I'll meet you there. <laughs> no, we'll wait for drinks. It'll be great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you can start getting the drinks in whilst I'm finishing going down the slope. Uh, all ready for us. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, yeah. and I hope to see you real soon. I know. Me too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Really hope you enjoyed this episode. 
be sure to send me a message and let me know what you liked about it. And if there's anyone else that you'd love to have on the podcast, let me know who you want to hear from. I'd love to have them on. So until next time, bye. That was all the tea that you can get this week. Join me next time right here. It's the Weekly Tea.